What's up, Internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, I am making a long-awaited video of the Sony a6000 versus the Canon M50. This is more or less going to be a buyer's guide on why you should either buy the a6000 or why you should buy the Canon M50. If you don't know, both are mirrorless cameras. I think that's a very important distinction to make. They are not DSLRs. I really don't recommend DSLRs at all at this point. The only reason I would recommend a DSLR is if you have gigantic hands and really just don't like the small size of mirrorless cameras. Besides that, I think feature-wise, mirrorless cameras kind of crush DSLRs at this point. That's just my opinion. You're entitled to your own opinion as well. So moving on, these are the two mirrorless cameras that I have really fallen in love with. And if you're looking to buy one of them, this video is for you. I'm not going into super excruciating detail on either camera. I'm going to talk about the main features that I think you should know when trying to buy these cameras and the pros and cons and the differences between the two. So the first thing I'm gonna cover is the price. Now, the Canon M50 is newer. It came out in 2018, whereas the Sony a6000 came out in 2014. So the price is gonna differ a little bit and sometimes it's gonna be the same. The Canon M50 started out at a crazy $900, but now today in 2019, as of this video, it's around $650 with the normal 15 to 40 millimeter kit lens on it without the kit lens it runs you about six hundred and thirty dollars so it's really close to full price the Sony a6000 on the other hand its full non-sale retail price is six hundred and fifty dollars now however the Sony a6000 is also five hundred and forty eight dollars brand new usually there are more sales for the a6000 than there are the m50 also because the a6000 is an older camera and people have had them for a longer period of time than the m50 you can get an a6000 very very cheap on the used market whereas a canon m50 is going to be pricier in the used market so overall if you are strictly on a lower budget you're trying to get the most features the best camera for your buck it's going to be the Sony a6000. I know that Canon M50 is newer. We're gonna talk about the features that it has that the a6000 doesn't. However, you know, to get your dollars worth to go as far as it can, the Sony a6000 is really the camera to beat. Okay, so the second part of this video, which is probably the biggest chunk of it, the features. So both cameras have an ability to transfer their photos wirelessly to your phone or a tablet or something like that. You can do it anywhere you are, whether you're in the car on a road trip, in a jungle, in a desert, doesn't matter. Start a Wi-Fi point up on the camera, transfer to your phone or tablet. It's an amazing feature and both of these cameras do it really well. Both cameras have amazing autofocus. Canon has their patented dual pixel autofocus, which works great in both video and stills. And Sony, which I feel has the better autofocus, has the phase detect autofocus combined with contrast detect autofocus has more focus points, the a6000 does, than the N50. And I feel like it's just a tad snappier in the photo department and in video, I feel like they're pretty equal, but I would give the slight edge to the Sony a6000 in the overall kind of autofocus realm. Both cameras have a 24 megapixel sensor and both of them have a max resolution of 6,000 by 4,000. Both cameras have an on-camera flash and they both offer high High speed shooting. The Canon M50 has 10 frames per second shooting, whereas the Sony A6000 is a little faster at 11 frames per second shooting. I would definitely say Canon overestimated. It definitely doesn't feel like 10 frames per second in the high speed shooting mode, whereas Sony's is like a literal machine gun. Okay, so let's get into some of the differences between the M50 and the 6000. These may be some deal breakers for you in your purchasing decision. So I know this might not be the biggest thing for a photographer, but for an all around content creator, the M50 has a microphone jack, which the A6000 does not. I feel like a lot of people get the A6000 and they're shocked it doesn't have a microphone jack. What this allows the M50 to do is to be a little bit more video creator friendly in the audio department so you can put a Rode microphone on the top 
plug it into the side and get high quality audio for you know walk around vlogs or really any kind of video production. The A6000 on the other hand doesn't have a microphone jack so what you have to do in a situation like this where I shoot all my videos with an A6000, I have to use an external microphone to the side or on a boom mic or something like that and it does add time to the post-production process. It's a little bit of a pain if you're not used to it. For me, it's like second nature now and I get great quality audio as you can hear right here. Everybody gave me crap when I first started filming YouTube videos and I didn't have one. Using the on-camera mic sucks on either camera, really in a big room, it's gonna sound like a tin can, but the Canon M50 is a little more friendly in that aspect. You have a microphone jack and have a on-camera pretty much solution rather than a big stand external solution and then requires post processing. Now moving on to more differences are the video specs. The M50 shoots 4K at 24 frames per second and it shoots 120 frames per second but at 720p. Now it's cool that such a tiny camera like the M50 shoots 4K, however it is heavily cropped and you also don't get the world renowned Canon dual pixel autofocus. So it's a very crippled version of 4K, but it is 4K in a very tiny camera, which is pretty cool. And the slow-mo, I mean, really, are people really gonna tell that it's 720p slow-mo? Some people may be able to tell the difference, but a lot of people may not tell the difference. So having that option is kind of nice. Canon is world renowned for throwing in features and then kind of crippling them a little bit. So do you think these features in the Canon M50 make it superior in video? Or the A6000 has great 1080p video and it also has 60 frames per second and you can slow that down in slow-mo, but the Canon also has those too. It has great 1080p and it also has 60 frames per second as well, as well as, you know, 120 and 4K. Next is the ever so coveted screen or the flippy screen, rotating screen, articulating screen, whatever you wanna call it. It is the gem of pretty much all Canon cameras. So a couple things is Canon really knows how to make beautiful screens. Two, it's a touch screen and three, it flips around, articulates, you can see yourself while you're filming, no external monitor needed. Now, in Sony's defense, if they came out with a flippy touchscreen in 2014, the quality of the M50s, somebody would have thought they time traveled to the future and stole technology from aliens. But that's not the case. The Sony A6000 came out a while ago, years ago, five years ago at this point. So it's got a rather limited screen. This is what it can do. It can basically go out, flip halfway, and that's really about it. So the complete edge in this department goes to the Canon M50. I love the touchscreen. It is such a joy to use. It's really easy to pick focus points. It's really easy to change from object to object. I have fallen in love with the Canon M50's touchscreen. I wish all cameras had a touchscreen like it. You can touch, you know, a, one object, touch another object, go back and forth super easily. The focus is lightning quick with the touchscreen functionality. And of course, if you think of YouTube or you think of vlogger, you think flip around screen, you think flippy screen. And that's what the M50 has. So I feel like if you are going to walk around vlog, it is a pretty attractive option. I've said in the past, the A6000 is a perfectly good vlogging camera using face detection and a wide lens, even the kit lens, and you can be in focus all of the time. I daily vlogged with it forever, but a flip around screen is nice. Okay, and this may be an unexpected last feature I wanna talk about, but it is the file type of the images that each camera supports. The Sony a6000 obviously supports JPEG and RAW files, which is great. I shoot all of my photos in RAW, so I have the utmost flexibility when I edit them. However, Canon with the Canon M50 has taken the step into the CR3 RAW format, which is half 
the file size, but it has all of the data of a normal raw file. I think this is a great innovation that not enough people are talking about. I mean, why wouldn't you want a file type to be half the size as other raw file types, but still have the same amount of data. Now, up until this point, you may think that I'm you know, favoring the M50. I love the camera. I love a lot of the features it has, but there are newer features in a newer camera. However, when it comes to an interchangeable lens camera, one of the most important factors in your buying decision should be the lenses that support the camera. Now, with that said, there are very few lenses for the Canon EOS M line, which is the Canon M50. Now the EOS M lens lineup is only eight lenses deep, and that is, you know, not that many in the grand scheme of things, and two of them are kit lenses essentially. So if you wanted to expand your lens options with the Canon M50, you can get a lens adapter, which is gonna add a little bit of length, a little bit of weight, and it's obviously gonna add cost. So it's gonna make it at a more expensive, heavier, longer setup than what it's intended to be. Of course, adapting lenses is something that a lot of people do, but for me personally, I prefer native lenses and it would just be nice if they added more native lenses to the Canon EOS M lineup. Now, Sigma, who is the ultimate third wheel, has come recently to save the day and in July of this year, 2019, they announced the three lenses that they make for the Sony A6000 line, the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, which I'm filming on right now, 30 millimeter 1.4 and the 56 millimeter 1.4. All fantastic lenses are actually coming to the Canon EOS M lineup. I don't know when, but they're coming. Now, on the other hand, the A6000 is part of the Sony E-mount system, which the A6000, 6300, 6400, 6500, 5100, all share the E-mount, and then their full frame line of cameras also share the E-mount. So like the popular Sony A7 III, the brand new Sony A7 Mark IV, the Sony A9, they all have the same mount. You can use lenses on any of those cameras. Now there are pros and cons to using full frame lenses and vice versa and all that stuff, but it opens you up to experimentation. It takes the adapter out of the equation and in my opinion, it's a better alternative. Plus they have more native lenses because the Sony A6000 has been out longer and they've made more lenses for it. Okay, and then the last section is really just I wanted to talk about what use cases each camera is best suited for and hopefully help you if you're deciding to buy one of these, which one you should buy. I think it's hard to not recommend the Canon M50 if you're going to be a walk around vlogger, maybe a daily vlogger, or you're just kind of getting into YouTube and you want a minimal kind of video setup. Like we touched upon earlier, you can get a Rode microphone or any branded microphone with a microphone jack and just kind of be all set audio and video wise. Don't have to worry about external monitors, microphones and stuff like that. It's really an easier camera to kind of get started with. And as far as photography is concerned with the Canon M50, I really like really love the colors that come straight out of the camera. A lot of the times I feel like beginners aren't editing their photos a lot and the Canon M50 with straight JPEGs, the, the quality of the color is just so rich and that's just in standard profile. You can of course use kind of like a vivid profile and other profiles to get different colorings and everything like that. But I feel like straight out of the camera of the Canon M50, things just look great. Lastly, with the Canon M50, I think it is a better camera for beginners, kind of just in general, whether it's photo or video. The menu systems are more friendly and having a touchscreen menu system is just a lot more accessible, I think, than using a thumb pad and going through all of the different tabs and stuff. Being able to just touch directly to a setting you want is really valuable and I think beginners would really appreciate that. The Sony a6000 on the other hand, I think is more maybe for somebody who wants more lens options, who kind of want to get their teeth into the Sony ecosystem and are maybe thinking that, you know, photography might become their kind of thing. There are more kind of growth options when you're in the Sony E-mount system versus the EOS M system. If you want to graduate to a full frame camera with the EOS M series, you kind of have to sell everything and then start over in another system. I think the Sony A6000 is the better option for sports photography. Uh, I think the Canon M50 can hold its own in sports photography, but I think the Sony A6000 shoots a little bit faster. It's autofocus is a little bit faster. And with the lens options, I feel like it's just a better sports photography camera. 
I also think the Sony a6000 because of the lens options is a little bit better suited to be like a second kind of camera for a professional. Obviously shouldn't be a primary camera for like a wedding or something like that, but a second shooter or you know, maybe even like an engagement session, stuff like that. I mean, that's what you know me and my girlfriend use it for. It's definitely capable of that. It's capable of giving pro results. The Canon M50 can definitely give professional results as well. I mean, shit looks amazing out of it, but I think the a6000 with the lens options and stuff, it makes it a little bit easier than you know getting an adapter and all that stuff. The battery life is better on the a6000. It's not you know light years ahead, but it is better than the M50, which is kind of something that both cameras don't have great battery life. But I think the a6000 is a little bit better. That's something that will help you know, semi-professional or professionals out if this is their second camera or even primary camera for little photography gigs. Some final thoughts. I absolutely love both cameras. If you weren't aware of that, if you thought I had some bias, I don't. I love both of these cameras. A lot of you guys may have seen on Instagram, I mainly post with the Canon M50 now. However, I shoot all of my videos with the Sony a6000. Right now, as of filming this video, the Canon M50 has taken over as far as the stills department for me. I'm more of a casual shooter. I've kind of stepped back from doing, you know, engagement shoots and stuff like that. And I just, I love the combination of the new 32 millimeter F1.4 in the Canon M50. I love the touch screen. It's, you know, I love the look of the camera. Plus my a6000 is a little beat up at this point. However, I use my a6000 for all of my YouTube videos. I use it for B-roll. I just, I love my a6000 for video and it's my go-to. I love the look that I get right here with my YouTube videos. So that is not gonna change anytime soon. What do you guys think? Do you like the M50 better just by listening to this video? Or do you like the A6000 better because of previous videos and this video? What would you need more? Would you need a microphone jack? Do you wanna shoot 4K despite its crop? Or do you want the lens options? Or do you want a little bit better battery life? Or do you want the flip screen? There are very contrasting things between these two cameras. They're similarly priced. One's older, one's newer. I know, I know, it's a lot to take in. There's a lot of different stats and facts about these cameras, but I promise you, and hear me on this, both of these cameras are amazing. They're both amazing workhorses for their size, their price. They just have so much packed into them. Even though one's a lot older, one's semi-new, they just, they really hold their own in a battle against really any other cameras in the same price range in today's world. So regardless of which one you buy, for which purpose you buy it for, I think you can be happy with your purchase. They're amazing cameras and if you have any questions, any questions at all about these cameras, what they can do, the different settings and all that, that's why I'm here. Let me know in the comments which camera you prefer. Are you thinking about buying one and now you've made a decision? Or which camera do you own and know and love? Let me know in the comments. I would love to talk to you guys about it. Okay, the video is over now. I've been sitting in this living room for multiple hours filming this. I'm losing my voice. You probably can't tell, but I can feel it. I'm losing my freaking voice right now. This has been a doozy of a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below everything and anything about these cameras and I will help you guys out if I can. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.